Now, I've reviewed my share of Asus ZenBooks in the past, some of the more popular videos on my channel. If you haven't checked them out, I'll leave a few in the description below. But for those that didn't see it, what I like what the ZenBook brings to the line is nice, sleek, and modern looks. I like the build quality, and I love the displays. They usually have some pretty nice displays on them. And I love the price. These don't break the bank. They give a lot of bang for the buck. So the latest to come in is running the 12th gen Alder Lake processor. It's got a 14 inch 2.8K display, 90 Hertz display. It's an OLED display. Yeah, it sounds really good on paper, but the best thing about this so far has been the price. All of this comes in at $750. Let's find out if it's actually worth your money. Hey everybody, it's Andrew, and this is my unboxing and first look at the brand new Asus ZenBook 14 OLED here for 2022, coming up. Now, before we get to the unboxing, I wanna let everybody know in the interest of transparency and full disclosure, I'm not being paid by ASUS, I'm not being sponsored by ASUS. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. ASUS is not getting copy approval. That means they're seeing this video for the first time just like you. Now, this unit was purchased with my own money. I did not receive a review unit from Asus. Now, you can pick up the Asus ZenBook 14 OLED model from Best Buy. Now, this is the model that's called the UX3402, and they have a special SKU, I think, here for $749.99. That's where I got it. But this model has only 8 gigabytes of RAM, and it has 256 gigs of SSD storage. Now, that storage is upgradable, but the RAM is soldered into the motherboard. So buyer beware. But as you're gonna see from these numbers, these are actually pretty decent numbers that this can produce. And I'm super impressed so far with that gorgeous OLED display that we're gonna take a look at in just a little bit. Now, there are other SKUs with more RAM and more storage options that Asus will sell, so stay tuned. I don't have any information yet on that, but once I do, I'll let everybody know. But so far, this basic entry-level model has been excellent. We're gonna get into it now. But for those interested in this model, I'll leave a link in the description below for more information and where you can buy one. And with the specs and pricing out of the way, let's find out what you get inside the box. Let's open it up. Now, lifting the lid, the laptop is raised to greet you. I like that unboxing experience so far. Now, there is no sleeve in the box with this SKU. I imagine there will be in others. And of course, you get some documentation and a 65 watt power adapter. It's USB-C and it's pretty compact. And of course, you get the unit itself. Now, holding it for the first time, it's very nice and premium feeling. Even though this retails for $749, it doesn't feel cheap in any way. I like the build construction, much improved from prior generations. I like what they did here. And I like the design here as well, with those lines on it, giving it a very sleek and modern look. But one thing to note, so far I'm noticing it is a major fingerprint magnet. You will be wiping it down quite a bit. Now, this comes in two different finishes. I have the Ponder Blue, which you see here, and the Aqua Celadon, which is more of a greenish type color, which actually looks pretty nice as well. Okay, let's check out the port selection. On the left side, you get a USB-A port. It's a USB-A 3.2 Gen 2 port, which is great to see. And then you get some heat vents next to that. And moving over to the right side, you get a micro SD card reader, which of course is always good to see. You get two USB-C Thunderbolt 4 ports that are full function. They do data charge and display out. Yes, you can charge with either one of those. And next to that is a 3.5 millimeter microphone headphone combo jack. And next to that is an HDMI 2.0 port to round out the ports on this laptop. I would say in all in all, it's a pretty decent port selection. Now, as far as the user upgradability is concerned, you cannot upgrade the RAM yourself. That means it's soldered into the motherboard, and my unit has 8 gigabytes of LP DDR5 RAM running in dual channel mode. And because it's soldered in, you as the user will not be able to upgrade it, which is a little bit of a negative, but not surprising since this is such a thin and light laptop. Now, as far as the SSD is concerned, that is user upgradable, and it does support PCIe Gen 4 SSD storage, although the 256 gigs that I got with my unit is only Gen 3 as evidenced by these reads and writes, which are not terrible, but not great either. 
and it has Wi-Fi 6E along with Bluetooth 5.2, and both have been working well. No issues so far, and the good news is it's slotted in. That means if you need to change it out down the road, you have that option. It's not soldered in. And while we're inside, you'll notice that it has a 75 watt hour battery. I'm hoping to get decent battery life out of this. I still need to do my testing. I didn't have it long enough so far, less than 24 hours. So I'll report my battery findings very soon in a full review. Now, also while we're inside, take a look at that single fan for cooling. But what I've noticed so far is under heavy load in the performance mode, that fan will kick in and it is noticeable. So we'll take a look at the thermals in that upcoming full review and I'll report my findings. All right, let's talk about the display. And what we're looking at here is a 14-inch 2.8K display that has a resolution of 2880 by 1800. It's an OLED display. We'll get to that in a moment with a 16 to 10 aspect ratio. And I love the move to a 16 to 10 aspect ratio. In the past, a lot of these Zen books had that 16 to 9, which would be great for watching movies. But of course, it didn't show as much. So you didn't do quite, quite as well in terms of the productivity. So with a 16 to 10, you'll see more on the display. You'll do less scrolling when it comes to web browsing. Now, this also is a 90 hertz refresh rate display, although it is 60 out of the box. You'll have to go into the advanced display settings, enable 90, which of course will use a little bit more battery life. We'll get into the battery life numbers in the full review. And it also has a 0.2 millisecond response time. So for gaming and for the really smooth scrolling and everything you'd want, having that 90 hertz refresh rate with that very fast response time, you're going to really get that very fluid experience throughout the OS and you're going to love it. Now, this, of course, is an OLED display that will have the really deep blacks, the super vibrant colors, and, of course, the high contrast we come to expect with an OLED display. So everything has been great in that regard. Watching high dynamic range content has been great because this is a Visa certified display with the HDR True Black 600. This can have max brightness or peak brightness under HDR to 600 nits, which has been great. Now, it's rated at 400 nits for everyday use and stuff like that, and I did measure 400 nits, so it's pretty accurate in that regard and it also has great coverage of the color gamut so if you're a content creator this is going to be a great choice to do color grading lightroom photoshop and of course video editing it's also a color accurate display with a very low delta e score and it really is a great display to not only consume media but to create content with but one thing to note, it is a glossy display and you will notice some glare and reflections depending on your lighting conditions so please be aware of that so this is the front-facing camera on the brand new Asus ZenBook 14 OLED here for 2022. I love the display, 2.8K, 90 hertz, everything you'd want, really fast response time as well. But I'm also liking the fact that this camera, even though it is a 720p on this particular one, is actually pretty decent. That has a few effects that you can do with this, as you'll see in a moment. Now this camera can also do some effects like we've been seeing as of late, this does the background blur effect, which I kind of like actually, especially if depending on where you are, you don't want people to see the background. You're in an important meeting. I think this might be very handy. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. King, of course, keeping you always in frame, which you gotta love. Uh, really interesting camera so far, even though this particular one is a 720p camera, there is a 1080p option according to the website for Asus. So this is the 720p. Uh, what do you think about it? But again, it does have the tracking. If you turn that on, if you're moving around, it will, it's, at least it's supposed to. There it goes. And it sort of does a decent job. There we go. So what do you think about it? Pretty interesting. And for those wondering, yes, you can open the lid with one finger. Now, the hinges are designed for this screen to go back 180 degrees. That means you can put the screen flat, as you see here. That'll give you a pretty good viewing angle, depending on what you like. So that's been pretty good. Although I noticed that the hinge is a little bit loose towards the end there, and it will fold flat. I think it's done by design, but just something to be aware of. Now, lifting the lid also does something else. It also shows that this has an ergo lift hinge. We've seen this in the past, and what it does is it gives you a raised typing angle which will help not only with the typing experience but with the airflow and the thermals have been pretty good so far i'll report my findings in that upcoming full review 
Now, as far as the keyboard itself is concerned, it's actually worked out pretty well so far. It's got about 1.4 millimeters of key travel, really good tactile feedback, and it has a multi-stage backlight. That'll allow you to get work done in a dark room in a dimly lit environment. It also has a pretty nice touchpad. It's a precision touchpad. It's a glass touchpad, and it worked well. Two-finger scrolling has been buttery smooth, and all the gestures seem to work as advertised, so that's been pretty good. Now, this is also that screen pad 2.0 where you can press of a button here, gives you that numpad. So for those number crunches out there, you're going to like that option for spreadsheets and the like. Now, the speakers on this have been pretty good so far. They're Harman Kardon tuned. The mids have been pretty decent and the volume was pretty good and it was a hint of bass. Now, let's compare it to one of its competitors, the Yoga Slim 7 Carbon, which I recently reviewed or otherwise known as the Idea Pad, depending on your market. I thought the speakers on that were really good. Let's compare the two and see which one is better. I think the Carbon's a little bit better, but not a bad try here for this updated ZenBook. Let's take a look at them. All right, let's talk about the initial performance so far. And this is running that Core i5 1240p. Now, this is my first time looking at this particular chipset. We just took a look at the Core i7 1260p. And like that chipset, this has 12 cores. And so far, the numbers are actually pretty decent on this, a little bit better than I was expecting. Certainly better than the one I saw on the Samsung Galaxy Book 2 Pro 360, which didn't do quite as well in terms of the multi-core performance, which was quite disappointing on that one, despite the fact that that had an i7-1260p. This i5-1240p, this new Alder Lake processor, has been really good so far. Even though this is only that Core i5, I would imagine it would be even better with that Core i7-1260p, which according to Asus's website will be available. I don't know when, but when it is, I'll let everybody know. But so far, this Core i5 has performed well. Microsoft Office, email, web browsing will not give you any problems. I have not seen any hiccups. Watching 4K video has not been an issue on this so everything really works out well watching high dynamic range content i didn't see any stuttering it really has been working out well now i like the fact that asus gives you some control in that control panel the different thermal profiles running it in performance mode gives you that extra boost there is a silent mode of course and then there's the balance mode which will of course uh, be a nice blend between the two i'm going to get into all the performance numbers very soon but as you can see from these numbers uh, pretty impressive especially for this uh, core i5 i'll I'll bring more in the upcoming full review. All right, let's bring it all home. So far, so good. Less than 24 hours with this Asus ZenBook 14 with its OLED display has been impressive. That 2.8K display really has shown me that they are stepping up their game here. It's a beautiful OLED display. I love the 90 hertz refresh rate, the really fast response time. That is very surprising, especially at the price point of $750. I like the performance out of that 12th gen Alder Lake processor. The speakers sound pretty decent so far far and everything is working out well like the keyboard the touchpad everything is looking good i love that ergo lift hinge i like the all aluminum build construction which has been rock solid so i'm looking forward to putting it through its paces to bring you my full review that will be coming very soon so what do you think about the asa zenbook 14 oled uh got it at best buy as i mentioned 750 dollars gets you that 2.8k oled display 90 hertz refresh rate really fast response time uh oled displays are going to give you the really deep blacks i mentioned in the video the vibrant colors that just pop the really great contrast this doesn't disappoint it is a glossy display I would like to see a matte display offering as well. Hopefully, Asus will offer one. I like the performance, surprisingly good performance out of that 12th gen Alder Lake processor running the i5 1240p. It's got the 12 cores. You've got the four performance cores and the eight efficiency cores. And actually, the numbers look pretty good. I'm very impressed so far, especially coming from that Galaxy Book 2 Pro 360 from Samsung. Now, as far as the battery life, I have to test all that. It has a 75 watt hour battery. I'm hoping to get good battery life, although it is a 90 hertz refresh rate. We'll see the difference between 90 and 60. Maybe that will help out and maybe an hour or two more hours of battery life running it in the 60 hertz 
mode. And then, of course, we still have to test the thermals. It does have a fan in this. It did kick in under the performance mode, so I need to check that out. And, of course, do all my testing as I normally do. Can you game on it and all that stuff? But I'm really impressed so far. I like the design. I like the keyboard. I like the touchpad. I like that ergo lift hinge. Everything about it so far looking very promising, especially that $750 price. Of course, if you want to get one with 16 gigabytes, which I would recommend, or something with more storage, although it is user upgradable in terms of that storage, you want to go for something higher than the one that comes here. That will also be an option. But I'm curious to know what you think. Let me know in the comment section below. So please hit the like button, please subscribe, please share this video. Don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section below. Let me know how I'm doing. Let me know if there's a device or something out there you think I should review. I'll do my best to try to make that happen. Don't forget to check me out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and of course, my website, amdtechreviews.com. So until next time, this is Andrew from AMD Tech. See ya.